What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're doing an old cash register so let's just get into it. So to start it off I'm just going to start with a cube and then start blocking out the main shapes of the object. I'm going to start with the bottom part first and then slowly work my way up. And as usual it's important not to rush this part, just take my time and get the main shapes right. Here I'm just going to delete a face and then grab those edges and extrude them inwards just so I can make the area where the drawer is going to sit. To make the drawer, I'm just going to start off with another cube again. I was working off of a couple different references I found online, a few on ArtStation and some on Google as well, and they were pretty different from one another so I didn't know which direction I wanted to go. So I was just thinking about which part from each photo I wanted to take to add into this model. So just taking my time and making sure I get all those initial shapes right. Now for the dividers, I'm just going to start with another cube and scale those nice and small just to fit inside the drawer. So to make the shape a little more interesting, I thought I would add two edge loops and then grab those side faces and extrude them inwards a little bit. I thought later when I add that wood texture I'm going to apply to it, it would just make the shape a little more interesting to look at. So next up was moving on to the top part. I just want to start blocking out those shapes, so start off with the cube as usual and scale that into the size that I'm looking for. Just grabbing the verts and moving them around, looking at different angles. Next I'm going to add a few edge loops and just for the edge I know I want to have the bottom part like a small little bump on the bottom part or a little extrusion. So rather than extruding those afterwards I just added a few edge loops then grab those edges and extrude them upwards. Once again, add another edge loop and then extrude that top face. And now I'm just looking for that main shape, that old style bulky shape these cash registers have. So just zooming out, making sure to zoom out and look at it from different angles and not rush this part just so I can make sure I get the shape right. It's a lot easier making sure you get this correct than it is to come back afterwards when you add polys to change things up. So now I'm just adding another cube and positioning that to where the box is going to go, where the receipts, I believe it's where the receipts are held, I'm not exactly sure. but. Just starting to position things and blocking out the main shapes. And then I can take that cube and duplicate that to start blocking out those top shapes where the price is going to show. And once again, just going to insert a few edge loops and delete that front face. So continuing on, I'm just going to keep inserting some edge loops just to start blocking out the main shapes to where the keys are going to go and that stick that slides up and down to open the tray. The more you plan ahead, the smoother the whole model will go. So I'm just trying to take my time and make sure I get that all those positions right. 
for this next part, I'm just going to select the faces that I want, go edit mesh and extract, and that way it will just separate these faces from this object. So while looking up some reference, I came across a really cool picture that showed this receipt box as a wooden box. Rather than being metal and like built into the main structure, it was sitting out front and kind of held together by wood. And it looked really cool, especially because I love adding wear and tear and making my mods look all beaten up. This was a perfect idea. So I decided to go with that. So here I'm just adding a few edge loops to get that shape and I can start forming it around to get that position like it's kind of sitting on the front of this whole cache register. Then I can take this cube, duplicate that over to create that wood piece that's sitting beside. I knew I wanted to have a coupon that was kind of pinned with a tack that was stuck to the side of this wooden piece. So with moving some verts around and adding a few edge loops, I can start blocking out those main shapes. So next was creating that metal lid or cover that's on the very top and a really quick way of doing that was using the exact same extract tool we used earlier. So here I can just click that object, duplicate it, select the faces that I want since they're already in the right position and then go edit mesh and extract. That way it separates those faces from the object. I can then delete the other object I don't need and I have a new object that's already positioned exactly where I need it. And then I can select those faces and extrude them to make it however thick I'd like. Now I'm happy with the main shape, I can start adding some more polys. So jumping back to the drawer, I'm just going to go add a few more edge loops to make some small extrusions on the sides. And then I can go ahead and start beveling all the edges. really quick way to make a front lock on my drawer, I'm just going to take that cylinder and increase the subdivisions up to 40 just to add a little more polys. Then I'm going to delete those front faces, select all the edges and extrude them inwards. And then using the scale tool, I can select a few of those edges and scale them nice and flat just to make a nice little small rectangle so my key can go into. So now I have the main shapes all blocked out, it's time to add more polys. So to all the other objects, I'm going to start beveling all those hard edges.
So here I keep hitting 3 on my keyboard to see what the object looks like smooth. Now all those edges and those verts as you can see aren't being supported so they're all kind of collapsing in on themselves. So here using the multi cut tool I can start connecting all of those verts and creating those supporting edges. So things are starting to look a little bit better when I smooth it, but I still have to go in and start beveling some of those edges. Awesome, and now when I hit 3 on my keyboard, as you can see everything supports itself and it's starting to look good. So now quickly jumping back to that lid, I'm just going to go delete some of those faces to save room on my UV map and as well as deleting some of those unnecessary edge loops. And then I'm going to go and bevel all over the edges. lever or stick that I believe opens the tray, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to start blocking out those shapes with starting off with another cylinder. Next is adding a plane to where the price is going to show, as well as bubbling all those edges. create the spacing between the numbers and to make sure that those are correct and similar to one another, I'm actually going to use a bevel tool. So depending on how many numbers I want, in this case there's four, I'm going to insert four edge loops and then selecting those edges I can use a bevel tool to individually space out those numbers. So now using that slider I know that they're going to be correctly spaced out and in proportion to one another. Next up was creating those keys that you press down. So to save some time, I reused that shape I made for the lever and duplicated that over and then using the scale tool, just scale that down much smaller. I then took one of those keys and duplicated that three more times to make four. I knew from the reference I was following, I believe there was four or five keys in each row depending on the reference image I was using. So I just started to block out the main shapes to where these keys are actually gonna fit. Here I actually realized when I clicked all those edges to create those bevels on this main object, I forgot this little edge so I have to go in just to fix this little corner. So 
So now jumping back to that wooden receipt box, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do this, so just wanted to play it a little slow here and start blocking out some of the main shapes. For that metal little hinge that opens up the box or that the lid is actually attached to, just going to create a little cylinder, go in and extrude inwards a few of those faces just to give it a little more shape. Now jumping back to those keys I made earlier, I wanted to make sure I nailed down one of the keys before I started duplicating it and making all the others. And all of the reference, they were pretty much the same. They had a small little indent on the middle where the imprint of whatever key it is, as well as the color of the key. So here I'm just going to start extruding in some of those faces and working on the main shape that I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to add a small bevel to the edges. Once the sizing looks good, I can go ahead and duplicate that object over three more times so I'll have a row of four. Now it's good to note ahead of time, if I wasn't recording this, I would have UV'd one of these keys and then duplicated it over just so I don't have to go and redo all of this. Just for the sake of the video, to make it shorter, I didn't do that. So now that the keys are all grouped together, I can go ahead and start duplicating them just to create the more rows I need on the front face of my object. So a quick way of doing that is with pressing the insert tool on your keyboard, you can actually change the pivot point of that group. So I brought that pivot point down and pressing Ctrl D on my keyboard to duplicate it, give it whatever rotation that I'm looking for, and then pressing Shift D I can go and redo that move however times I need to. I then realized after looking at the side angle that the rotations were off anyways, so I just manually go in and adjust each row's rotation just to line up better with the object. So next up was creating that cover or that lid where my logo is going to go. So I just took the object that's already in the correct position, duplicated it, select that front face and deleted everything else. It's just an easy way rather than creating a cube and then trying to align that right position. It's just already there and makes my life easier. I can then select those edges and extrude them downwards to create that thickness I'm looking for and then bevel out those edges. Now for that little dish, I'm just going to create another cylinder and create the capsta too so I can just pull down those inner faces and then just bubble out some of those edges. And then same thing for the coins or the quarters, I'm just going to create another cylinder and just bevel out a few of those edges.
then going to go ahead and start duplicating those quarters and then add a few of them into the tray as well and just start positioning them all over the place. Once again, it would have been smart to go ahead and UV these before I start duplicating them. Uh, it just makes your life easier when you're actually going through the modeling process. And for the size, I wasn't too concerned. Um, I could have actually measured or took the dimensions of a real quarter and then sized that up. But to be honest with you, I wasn't worried. I could scale the size of the texture inside Substance, so I wasn't too concerned about that. For the box that's going to hold all those menus. At the time I didn't know what the box was going to hold, I just wanted something else to be up here that looked a little empty, so I went ahead and just created another cube and started blocking out that shape. And then for the menus themselves, just another cube scaling that really thin and duplicating that a bunch of times. And just keeping in mind to offset each of these menus a tiny bit as it would never be perfect in real life. So, so the more you can slightly rotate things and change the angles, the more realistic it will look. Now with another cylinder, I can start creating those little bolts that are holding my wood piece in place. Now jumping back to the receipt box, just going to start beveling some of those edges. I thought it would be cool to add like a little key lock on the side and leave it kind of a crack open just so you can tell it's an actual door that opens on the side. So here I am just slightly opening and changing the position of that cube. And now for that leather piece that sits on top of that wooden box, I'm going to start off with another cube, scale that nice and thin, then I'm going to add a couple edge loops and I'm going to grab those end verts and just lift them up a little bit. This is just going to help create that illusion like that leather piece is curling up a little bit. And then I want to just wrap it up with a nice little bevel on the edges. Jumping back to that drawer, I'm just going to go ahead and move a couple of those edges down, just help round out a few of those corners. I don't want it looking too consistent or too perfect, I was hoping to kind of make this wood piece look a little more weathered or a little more used, so I thought some of the edges in the corners should be bent in or a little dented, like they've been nicked and hit throughout the years. up for the key I'm just going to start with another cube, scale that nice and small and thin and then add a few edge loops and move some of those points around just give it that generic shape of a typical key.
step was creating that string that would be hanging from the key. So to do that, using an EP curve tool under the create tab, I just created a line in the shape of the string I wanted, scaled that down, positioned it into the key, and then using the sweet mesh tool under the create tab as well, which is new in Maya 2022, also is very, very helpful when it comes to creating any sort of string or tubing. You can then tweak some of those settings to get the scale of the string that I'm looking for. And then when the scale's right, I can go in further, delete some of those faces, and attach those ends just so it looks like it's actually looping through the key. and then wrapping it up with a nice little bevel to the edges of the key. Next up is a coupon that's actually pinned onto that side piece into the wood. So I'm gonna start off with another cube, delete those back faces, and then add a few polys. I can then go in and individually move those verts around just to not make it so perfect square just to act as if the coupon's a little wrinkled or a little bent and just been used up over time. And then for the pin itself, I'm gonna start with another cylinder. I'm gonna scale that nice and small and then start scaling and extruding those edges to start getting it in the shape of a pin. Next up for the sticky notes, it's the same process as we just did, so starting off with another cube, I'm going to scale that nice and thin and then position that right on the lid or the cover of my cash register. Then I can go ahead and bevel some of those corners and add a few edge loops. Just like we did to that leather piece on the wooden box, I'm going to lift up the verts on one edge just to give it that illusion like it's actually curling up. I find it just helps give it a little more realism as the paper would rarely be completely flat. Things were looking good, but it was looking a little bit bare. I wanted to add a few more objects just to make it a little more interesting. So I thought a pen would make sense just because we added those sticky notes. 
So starting off with another cylinder, I'm going to scale that nice and small and start blocking out the pen. So along with the pen, I thought adding a few dollar bills on the inside of the tray would make it a little more interesting. So rather than finding the correct dimensions on Google, I decided just to give it a generic scale of a bill and then I could always change the size in the substance painter. And I'm continuously tweaking the scales of all these objects as I go, so you'll see the camera going in and out and I keep refining these shapes as we move along with the model. I'm just copying over some of those screws I made on that wood board just so I can put them on that leather piece we made. And quickly adding a small bevel to that extrusion we made just so when I add that wood material it will help to make it look a little more realistic. Lastly, just to add the nameplate on the front of the cash register, I'm going to start off with another cube, scale that nice and thin, and then put that into position. And then that's about it for the whole modeling. So next is the jump into Substance. So now that I have my model loaded into Substance Painter from Maya, I can go and bake my textures. So going down to the texture set settings, I can put my output size to 4K. Make sure to check use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, and then bake selected textures. Alright, so starting off with the wood texture, I found a wood beach texture that was already in Substance Painter. So I just opened that up, started tweaking the color settings, and getting that look I was looking for. So once I was happy with the color, I could right click it, set it to a black mask, and then go to the Polygon Fill tool. 
and then I can switch that to a mesh fill and then click on all the meshes I want to assign that texture to. So after stumbling across this wood chest stylized material in Substance Painter, I quickly assigned it to the object just to see what it would look like and I thought it looked a lot better. So I ended up going with this one over the other wood texture I currently had. So after tweaking a few of those colors, I did the same process, right click, set it to a black mask and then with the mesh fill tool, just ended up assigning that material to those objects. And here, because that bottom panel was so small in my UV map, because I knew it wasn't too important, um, I just had to play around with the settings a little bit, just like that grunge pass and a couple of the wood fibers, just to make that bottom panel not look so blurry or pixelated. So next up is searching through those leather materials, just looking for something that I was happy with. Next up was just jumping to that front key, um, going through all those metal materials, I think I ended up choosing one of the smart materials and tweaking a few of those settings. So next up was finding that material for the cash register itself. Now this was difficult, I didn't know what color or material I wanted to go with. I originally was leaning towards a blue, but I ended up finding the steel painted worn texture that was in Substance Painter that looked pretty cool. Just removed a little bit of that rust material, made it a little more functional looking, less abandoned, and tweaked a little bit of those color settings. I ended up going with a light beige material, only because in my mind a lot of the old equipment or Appliances tend to be this like off yellow, off white color, at least in my mind, so I ended up choosing that. So I spend the next little bit just tweaking a few of the settings just to get that look that I was going for. After pulling the camera back and just looking at the model, I realized that the wood looked a little bit too clean. I thought that there should be some worn out edges, so I decided to choose that first wood beached material we went with. And I switched that to a black mask and then changed my brush to a dirt brush. And I went ahead and started painting over all the corners. Like usual, going a little excessive and more than I want and then with the eraser tool I can go bring it back but I thought I would just wear out some of the corners, some of the areas that I thought would be touched more over time, just to make that wood texture look a little more aged. Now things were looking a little bit better, I thought going in and adding a little bit black material like a little bit of dirt or something would add a little bit more to it. So starting off with another plastic material, I just went ahead and changed that blue to a black and then changed the specularity, made it just a little bit more rough 
and then again with the dirt brush just started going on and painting on that black material. So texture one was looking good, now to jump on to texture two. So start off with the sticky notes. I decided to start off with a matte plastic material and just changing that to that off yellow white texture that sticky notes tend to be and then just switching that to a black mask and assigning that to that sticky notes mesh. I chose a used plastic material for that top part where the transaction amount would be. I can just change up the metallic to make it a little more metal. I just like the edge wear on it so just change that to a darker black and then assign it to that mesh. So here I'm just looking for a wood texture for my piece of wood on the side of the cash register. I wanted the wood to be a little bit different than the box that sits in front of it just because this is more like a organic piece of wood rather than an actual like shaped cut piece of wood for the box. I ended up choosing a similar color but I definitely wanted a little more fibers in there and a little bit more roughness just to make it look a little different. I also find adding a few different materials just makes it more interesting to look at. And now I just jump over to the other objects that don't have textures and start assigning materials to those meshes. Here for the keyhole because I didn't actually add a hole behind this key you can actually see the yellow plane I'm not sure you'd probably be hidden with shadows but just in case I'm gonna go add a separate material make that really dark and black and fill in that hole just to make sure you can't see that yellow texture in the hole So next up was the coin. I ended up finding this image on Google and saved it as a JPEG and then clicked and dragged it into this project. I then assigned it as a texture into the current session. I could then create a new layer and then using the projection tool, I can just click that image I dragged into Substance and assign it to the base material. Then I could just paint that right onto my coin. Now it's important because it's a metal to drag that metal slider up but using the projection tool is just a really quick and easy way of painting on an image onto a mesh. And like I mentioned before, I'm not too worried about the scale of the coins when I was modeling them, because here in Substance, I can just scale that image to fit the coin depending on however big it is. And now it's time to move on to the keys or to those main buttons you press. So I knew that the edges were all metal, so I wanted to start off with metal material. So after looking at some reference, I found some that were showing the buttons as orange and black and I thought it would be good to add a little bit of color into this model. So I decided to go ahead with that one. So I found some plastic materials that I thought would be fitting and I went ahead and started applying those. Now as you can see, I originally intended to apply these materials by using the polygon fill tool. Now if I cut those UVs correctly with the UV chunk fill, I could just assign that material by clicking on all those faces and it would just fill in those faces with orange. But because that cut wasn't actually on the edge there, I couldn't do that. So to make my life much more difficult and long, I had to use a polygon fill. So by individually clicking on each face, I could assign that material. Now I was very close just to going back into Maya and quickly just fixing that on the UV map and then jumping back in. But I thought, hey, while I'm here, I'll just go ahead and just go on with the process that I'm 
using, which was obviously just a lot longer. So I would recommend just making sure those UV cuts are in the correct places just to make your life easier when you're adding these textures. So for the sake of the video, I'm just going to fast forward this next part a little bit quicker because I go through each individual button and having to apply these just makes my life a little bit longer. So now that those are all finally done, it's time to move on to the numbers or letters that are inside these buttons. So to do that, just starting off with another plastic matte material, I can then go in and find an alpha that's already in substance, so I found a font that worked for me. Just assign that to the alpha and then wrote in whatever was needed for that button and did that same process for all of the buttons. And then afterwards I can go in and change the blue to a black as well as tweak the specular settings. So here I realized that they weren't all lined up straight on my UV map, so when I applied the material on my UV, they would show up a little crooked. Now I, that ended up working in my favor, I realized that I don't want these buttons and these numbers to be perfect and straight. The more reference I was looking at online, the older ones, they tended to be turned and angled, I guess just through time of using and pushing down these buttons, they just don't stay perfectly aligned to one another. So rather than jumping back to Maya to quickly fix that, I decided to use it to my advantage and just keep it how it was. same process that we did earlier for the other buttons for these numbers uh, just starting off with another plastic material and then I can just paint those directly onto the mesh. So 
For the sticky notes, it was the exact same process as the quarters, so I found an image on Google of just random notes that were on a sticky note, and I decided just to use that rather than creating my own. So just click and drag that right into Substance, assign that to a texture, and then to the current session, and then I can just project that right onto my mesh. Now because this texture was going off of the mesh a little bit, I decided to go in with the eraser tool after and just erase some of the letters that were showing up like they were half on the sticky note just to make it look a little more realistic. Now just to prevent the sticky notes from being different colors because I'm just projecting on an image from Google and because these notes were taken on different colors of paper, um, that's just a simple fix with the blending modes. So I believe I switched this to a darken, but that just allows me to keep that text showing on that sticky note, but as well as keeping that original color I had assigned to it. And then just to add a little more detail, I decided to add another plastic material, switch that over to a black, just so I could paint on a little bit of dirt on top of the sticky notes. for the menus, I just found another image on Google and I decided to drag those into Substance, assign those to a texture, and then I can just paint those directly onto my mesh. And once again for the bill, it's the same process, found an image on Google, drag that into Substance, and then just with the projection tool I can paint that right onto my mesh. So for the next little bit, I go on and just apply some more materials to the other meshes that don't have any textures applied to them. So just like this rubber knob and the metal on the key and the fabric on that little piece of rope that's hanging from the key. So I'll let this play out a little bit while I just go through and reapply some of these textures, as well as project some more images that I found on Google. So for that front nameplate on the cash register as well as the coupon that's being pinned up onto that piece of wood. I just found images on Google and then just like the other steps that I did earlier, I just drag those images into the substance and then I can project those onto those meshes. So, so I'll let this play out a little bit while I just apply the rest of these materials.
So with this diner sign, it was the same process as with the sticky notes. I didn't like the texture or the color that was showing from the image itself, and I wanted it to blend on with the original paint or that metal texture that I had on the object. Now it's the same process as with the sticky notes, so just by changing the blending modes, I can actually project that graphic and those fonts onto that metal material I had originally. So now I'm just going over the model to add a few small details. I noticed that the letters were looking a little bit too perfect, especially on this object that's pretty beaten up and scratched. So with the eraser tool, I can go in and start making some little nicks on these letterings. For all these stickers and images on the side of the cash register, I just found some more images on Google and decided just to drag those in just like the other ones we did earlier and assigning those to textures. Now something I could have done to add a little more realism to this was add them each an individual image on their own layer. That way when I'm painting them on I can add different heights like they're actually being layered on and some stickers are thicker than others. In this case because it's at the end and I didn't have much time, I decided just to add it all in its own layers. So dragging in one at a time, deciding it to a texture into the current session, I could just go and project and paint that directly onto the material. At the very beginning, I'm not paying too much attention to the outlines of these stickers. That's something I touch up after, so just quickly go on and paste all these in the correct positions and scales that I'm looking for. With the eraser tool afterwards, I can go in and just fine tune them and erase all those edges to make them look a little bit better. Now, if I originally did do this on separate layers, like I said, I could change the heights of all of these stickers and erasing them would just be that much easier as well. So it's just those little things you can do to make your texturing process a little bit easier for yourself. And just like we did before, I'm just going to assign a plastic matte texture and with the dirt brush I'm just going to go spray on a tiny bit more dirt spots. And because I have a problem always knowing when to quit, I decided just to add one tiny little final detail, just a few scratches. I thought the wood there was looking a little too clean. Now it would have been cool to add a couple of like words or 
I don't know, something a little more meaningful to the piece, but I decided just to add a little few scratches just to give it a little extra something. And that's basically it for textures. So here I'm just quickly jumping into the renderer. I'm just going to raise that floor height just to match up with my model. I clearly just forgot to do that in Maya before exporting. I think I ended up going with one of the studio lights for the final renderers, but they have a lot of different presets in there that work pretty well. And I didn't feel like taking this into stager, so just did those final renders right here. Thanks for tuning in to this week's model. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.